Hi, this is Mike Hendrickson from Strata EU in London. I'm here with Mark Tor. Mark, how are you doing? Ah, very well, thank you. So you work with SAS? Yep. And I haven't heard from SAS in, in a little while, so can you tell me what you guys are up to? You know, SAS is uh, on an amazing journey. We're, uh, we're, we're really revolutionizing, I think, the way that analytics and, and data management can be done in the Hadoop ecosystem. You know, for many, many years, SAS is that uh, world-renowned mega vendor in analytics. A lot of people don't know we also do data management and we've got all of these solutions. So we recently put out a cyber security solution, for example. Um, what we believe is we want to do the processing, right? run the analytics where the data is, and we can just see this Hadoop platform exploding out there with huge volumes of data, massive amounts of computation, and it's very clear we need to be there. So that's what we're up to. So the analytics sits on the top of the stack. Where does the data management sit? All across the whole stack, or can you tease out your data management a little bit? You know, a lot of people don't know SAS for data management, which is something that inside of our company we, we look at sometimes, because in fact data management's a massive amount of our revenue, because you can't do analytics or BI or run any of our solutions without first preparing the data, getting the quality right, governing that data. So, in fact, the, pretty much the first part of any project is, is data management. Um, so uh, inside of SAS, we have a large range of, of data management technologies. And around Hadoop in, sp in particular, uh, we're very proud of a brand new product we just brought to the market just actually about a month ago. And it's called SAS Data Loader for Hadoop. And um, it's a new technology. It makes use of things such as Scoop, Uzi. It generates Hive QL, so it's really friendly into the, into the Hadoop environment. Um, but it also can plug in with some of our own smarts on the Hadoop cluster, so we can install if you like a lightweight SaaS engine on each node of the cluster, and we can do things like uh, data standardization and data profiling, which are very hard to do today in the Hadoop world. Does this data loader work with legacy systems as well? Because I would imagine a lot of your customers have some systems already built, and a lot of them want to build new, small, startup little test case over here. Do they work together? So, um, SAS has got a pretty broad portfolio of data management and we, we have tools that are very much aimed at those, those say, legacy platforms. I still, I don't like using the word uh, legacy yeah, actually because yeah. these platforms are still very important to our customers. They're yeah. running their operational systems Mission and critical. they're not going away for any time soon. So um, we have a data management suite for that. It's, uh, it's a suite that's set up and designed to allow them to, to uh, if you like, m more robust and enterprise scale do data management. Um, and and that, that tooling also plugs in with Hadoop. What Data Loader is, is it's kind of an innovative space. It's trying to address that user audience uh, that wants to very quickly and rapidly get data in and out of Hadoop specifically right now, um, and to, to enable self-service data management in that ecosystem where the tooling right now isn't, isn't too good outside of those who can write code. I mean, Think about it, to do data management today inside of Hadoop, what do you need to know? You need to know PIG, you need to know HiveQL, maybe in the future Spark, Spark uh, SQL. You're going to need to know um, things like Flume, you're going to need to know Uzi, you're going to need to know Scoop. I mean, this is just a, a soup for organizations out there. And our data scientists, we don't want those guys with those skills messing around manipulating the data. We want them to get their data and get it ready and do the thing they're, they're really good at, which is investigate that data and suck some value out of it by hopefully using analytics. So your data management sets up your analytics so that, that the customers and your partners can actually make sense of the data rather than dorking with all the pieces of the pie? You know, I, I think, I think on, on the Hadoop world, that's actually one way to put it, actually. You could say that. In the, in the broader world, we're actually also helping people to build data warehouses and data marts, and we're helping them with governance, and we're helping them with, with data quality, standardization, householding, matching. So all of the things you would see in an old school, if you like, data warehousing or, or data management landscape. I think that's very important. So data governance is, is definitely there. The data loader is very definitely about trying to bridge or help companies bridge a skills gap. So one of the biggest challenges in Hadoop today is that skills gap. I mean, if you just go and look at the number of books on the O'Reilly stand downstairs, it's very impressive, all these authors writing about all of these things. They're all 200 pages long each. It's, you know, if I want to be an expert in data management in Hadoop, I, I got a lot of reading to do. Yeah. Um, so I think from my perspective, something like Data Loader for Hadoop can help you to get going faster. 
uh, be up and running quicker. But as you start to develop your skills, the nice thing about Data Loader is if, if you use the tool to get so far, you can look at the Hive QL code and you can edit it if you're skilled enough. If you, if you want to change the way something in Scoop is working and you're good enough and skilled enough, you can go and edit it. So it's not like we force you into a black box, but you can start in the black box and if you like slowly peel it back as you, as you get more skilled. So in, in looking at the companies you work with and, and your partners and your customers, how many of them, what percent would you say are traditional data warehouse, enterprise oriented companies that are experimenting with Hadoop and little data projects versus how many of them want to throw the baby out with the bathwater and totally jump on board? And then how many of them are struggling to even think about doing that? Is there, is it a third, third, third? It's a, it's a tough question to answer. <laughs> yeah. I think uh, yeah, it depends who you're working with. So the, the very large corporations, the big telcos, the big banks, they're looking, their enterprise architects are looking out five years and um, they can see this digital deluge or deluge coming. They can see this flow of data coming in from everywhere and they're beginning to question whether the way that they're set up today is, is the way forwards. And so they're, they're looking at, you know, do I need to think about things like a data lake? And if it's a data lake, is it just one Hadoop cluster or is it a Hadoop cluster combined with my existing technologies? Um, I think in other companies, it's not about throwing away the databases or, or the warehouse, it's about augmenting them or maybe slightly altering the way that they're being used. And I think some of that today is concerns over security and, and some of the things in the Hadoop ecosystem, which while they're coming along, extremely quickly are, are not yet mature enough. So a lot of the regulatory workloads, a lot of the operational systems which need ACID compliance are all going to live continuously there. But we see more and more analytics and more and more data management coming onto, onto the commodity Hadoop systems. Now, that's kind of an IT world where they're looking at modernizing, cost cutting, preparing for the right, future. Right, right. There's also a business side to this. Yep. Um, so there are sort of a yin and a yang going off um, and that's when we see a few other companies who are starting to try and figure out if they can do something with different data sets. So, for example, working with telco companies who are looking at right previously siloed data sets like our network data and our customer data, if we can bring those together, can we do a better job of churn prediction, for example? And you don't know the answer to that yet, right? You're going to bring the data together in a lab, you're going to run your modeling, you're going to try and figure out great data scientist type task. And if you, if you work out that bringing that data together makes sense, then you might want to do that in your warehouse today or in your next generation landscape. But if not, you may find you only need two or three bits of that network data and you, know, you don't really have to fundamentally alter everything downstream. So I, I think the way that I would see it is the larger companies are all very definitely looking at Hadoop and looking at whether that's going to have an impact on the way that they're operating. I don't think anybody is throwing out their warehouse per se. I think there are some people who want to scale it back. And what I mean by that is keep it at the same level as the data volumes grow. So, you know, in terms of inflationary type discussion, it stays constant, um, but we don't over invest in that platform going forwards. So do you see, so there's data for the IT group, basically the people keeping your company running, providing data to executives to make decisions. Then there's data for business. Well, I, th I think I see them as the you, same. I you, think, you right, I mean, what's the purpose of collecting data anyway and doing something with it? It's generally to try and get some value and deliver something to the business. Now, um, IT in itself is a business, right? When we talk about topics such as cyber security, that's an, an IT thing that we're watching. We're, we're watching things like, you know, is our HR team suddenly having, you know, 50 connections to a machine over in, in this corner, which is not normal. That's a, a, a cyber security potentially something's going off there we need to look at. So IT can also benefit from this data in their line of business. Yeah. And then there are business problems, which is more in the traditional space, the CMO space, the CRO space. So, you know, can I do better risk management? Can I, can in the marketing do better targeting of my customers, better know my customers, get, you know, work on churn and, and things like that. In insurance, they're looking at lifetime value and they're thinking about telematic data and how they can use telematic data to better you know, deal with insurance policies and, and things like that. So I, I don't know if I see it quite as separated as, between as IT for business. I, I, I see data and I think there are uses of data and some of those are more in the traditional spheres where we're used to it and some might be in, in breakout spaces. And so 
where would you see SAS being in, let's say, 12 months from now? So you've, you've been on a journey, data management, analytics, working together. Is there something new coming along for SAS in the next 12 months that, that you see? You know, we've got some really exciting technology cooking back in uh, Cary, North Carolina. It's the next generation of our analytics engine and we're really excited about that. Um, we, we'll, we'll basically take what we're doing up another level and uh, what we're doing today we already think leads the market and we think this will take it all the way to where it needs to be to pretty much scale infinitely and, and go out across, across clusters. So um, I'm pretty excited by what's coming. Um, obviously a little cagey here because I don't want to let the cat out sure. of the bag. But then all of the tooling that we've got on top of that will sit nicely on top of there. And for SaaS, again, we talked a lot about the data loader and the skills gap there, but actually that, that gap exists in many places. So it exists if we want to, for example, uh, build models. So how do we make modeling something that's easier to do without needing to be an experienced coder? How do we, how do, we do BI and visualization without having to write a lot of code and use these external packages? Um, and if we can build that whole cycle, which is what we're working on, and we can put that around the Hadoop ecosystem, leveraging great technologies that are in that ecosystem, as I've said, like an Uzi, a Scoop, um, Hive, if that's what you want to do, Impala in the case of, uh, of Cloud Air, if we can leverage those technologies as part of that platform, then you know everybody's a winner. Hopefully we get a, a very scalable, very performant system that allows both the experts, the coders to operate, but also allows the broader user base of the organization access to Hadoop. And you know, if you've got all that data, you, you want it to be used, so get it out there. Out there in the next 12 months. Yes, yes. so uh, very excited by what's coming. I think, uh, I think we're, we're, on, a, we're on, a, on a roll with Hadoop. SAS definitely wants to be the number one vendor um, for data management, analytics, visualization around and in Hadoop. So that's uh, definitely a, a target that we have in mind. Okay, well we'll talk to you next year and see how far along you've come. All right, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you.